Hello, my name is Guthrie, and I'm here to talk about behavioral economics, and today's topic is heuristics. Now, I have a confession to make. Uh, for the longest time, even though I'm a behavioral economist, I didn't really understand what a heuristic was. Uh, I kind of knew what it was referring to, but I didn't really understand it. And I think maybe that has to do with the name. Uh, heuristic is too Greek. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, I wish they would have given it a simple, a simple name. But here's all a heuristic means, is that we humans, we like to take shortcuts. And maybe this is evolutionary, uh, an evolutionary process um, that's more efficient. Maybe it's just because we're lazy. Uh, I'm not sure. But basically, instead of having a very, very complex problem, and you, know, you have to come up with a complex solution, uh, it's a shortcut where the process, instead of answering that difficult question, you just answer a bunch of easy questions or one easy question to come to a close answer. So the best example I can give you is imagine a baseball player. And for those of you international, baseball is an American game where a person hits a ball with a bat and it goes up in the air and someone has to catch it close to cricket. Um, and if you were a computer AI program who was tasked with catching catching a ball, right? So the ball is hit with the bat. It's up in the air. It's, it has this high trajectory. You have to get under it and find out where to catch it. it the answer to that, to that problem of where to stand to catch the ball once it leaves the bat is actually a very, very, very complex rocket science problem. You need to know the velocity of the pitch, the velocity of the bat, the angle of the ball, the wind, uh, the, the, the moisture in the air. Uh, it's a very, very complicated, basically rocket science problem to get to the right place. And then you have to get within the whole field, you know, hundreds of feet or meters. Uh, you have to, you know, you have a five by five area of which to position your glove to catch the ball. So it's a very, very difficult problem. And yet, uh, you know, little kids are running over and they catch the ball. It's just a, dogs do the same thing. It's, it's just a very easy, not easy, but it's a moderately difficult, but it's an intuitive process where you hit the ball and you figure out where to go. So how do people actually do this? Now, what's interesting is people are using a heuristic. So when the ball is hit in the air, um, all you have to do, and I would encourage you to do this too, right? So hold your hand out as if you were about to catch the ball with your with the mitt. Imagine if the ball is to the left of where you are going to catch it, right? You need to run that way so you can get under it. If the ball is to the right, you need to run this way so you can get under it. If the ball um, in the air, right, is below your, where you would catch it with your mitt, you know, that's that means the ball is going to fall before you get there. You better run forward. And if the ball is way up above you, um, then you'd better run backwards or it'll, it will go over your head. And so every second, you just track where it is and then you run and adjust accordingly with the goal of trying to get the ball right in the middle uh, at all times, right? And so once once the ball is in your view and it stays there and you kind of continue to move, right? Every Every second just being like, right? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? By the time the ball actually gets to you, you'll be pretty close. And then you have to make, you know, a little small movement here or there just to guide it into your glove. And so that's the that's that's using a heuristic to to come up with an answer, a relative answer to a very, 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 very tricky problem of what is the flight trajectory of the ball and where will it land so that I'm standing in the right place. So the heuristic here, the simple um, breakdown is just keep the ball in the in your field of view where your mitt should be to catch it and then you'll be in the right spot so that is the idea of a heuristic and sometimes you can have much better results uh, using heuristic than if you try and calculate the complicated problem there's a bunch of research on this and you can read you can read about it in the paper um, paper the, the post that I'm gonna make but uh, I'm going to kind of skip it because it does get a little complicated with algorithms and that kind of stuff. But the, what's important to know is that there are a lot of times when using a heuristic, you can often get a more accurate uh, guess than if you were actually doing the complicated thing. And this is because when we you try to solve a very complex problem, there's like a lot of different steps that we have to go through. And in those steps, we can sometimes get led astray. And if you just use the heuristic, even though, yes, it should be less accurate, you're getting rid of the places where you can go wrong, and sometimes you end up getting closer. And uh, I don't know, I mean, that's why we have the lexicon, you know, don't overthink it. Uh, sometimes using your gut, uh, when people talk about using their gut, 
it's usually two things. One, it's using your unconscious to make a decision, uh, which often can be more accurate. And two, it's potentially using a heuristic. Uh, so even if it is your unconscious, just to come to that decision quicker, uh, more quickly. So I'll give you a quick example um, that may, that may make sense in your app in in your life. So uh, in the 2016 election, um, you're trying to predict who you know. There's a very close. You, you live in a county that's very close. It's a close vote, and you don't know who's going to win. And so you're trying to estimate how many votes um, uh, Trump is going to get and how many votes Hillary is going to get. And so, you know, you've come up with this very, very complicated model based on, you know, prior voting rolls and based on, you know, uh, the wealth in the area and this thing and that thing. And, and it's like 17 different variables. And you come up with this, you know, complicated formula to determine voter patterns and the weather uh, to, to try and get an estimate. Um, and, that might work. That might be more accurate. But you should also try the heuristic method. And maybe the best way to to, to take a guess is just to be like, uh, like owning a Subaru or, for example, going to college or any of these other um, you know, questions that it's not a direct cause and effect, obviously, but it's a variable that happens to encapsulate a bunch of them together in a way that even that makes more sense and is more reliable than having a big complicated model. So my general advice to you is if you find that you're trying to predict something or you're trying to hit something exactly and you're not able to do so, you're, you're, you're off for some reason. Uh, if you are thinking about things really, really hard and have a, and it, 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 and have a very complicated model, try using a heur heuristic. Try picking something that's actually simpler or insanely simple and just using that as a quick shortcut and you may get a more accurate answer. Or if you are just guessing and you seem off, try using a more complicated model. That's the notion that we're mostly familiar with uh, where we guess and we're not quite right and then we use a much more complicated model and we can become more ac accurate. That's the other side of the street with a heuristic. While Yes, uh, it can allow you to come to answers faster and more and more accurately if you use a hu heuristic. You're cutting out a big portion of it. And so sometimes when we humans use a heuristic, things get uh, just the opposite, where we get less accurate. And it creates cognitive biases um, of, of, all, of all types. So heuristic is very important in behavioral economics because it's really the mechanism behind a lot of different uh, biases or, um, as I like to say, weird human-y thought things. Um, <laughs> but it's, and and so that 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 is the that's kind of the basis of a lot of them is instead of thinking things through and doing things again the way a computer program would, we just kind of jump to something that's close. And in a lot of ways, that's really great. If we see something slithering, you know, our brain goes snake, boom, right? If we see a, two, a little smiley face with two eyes and a nose and a mouth, you know, we go face, right? So it's really fast and really easy and feels really good to use a heuristic to jump to conclusions. But sometimes that can cause all sorts of problems um, that I will talk about later on as we go. Uh, and I hope this has helped explain what a heuristic is. Um, again, I would maybe advocate for a more simple word uh, like uh, human cognitive, like even cognitive shortcuts, I think would would uh, would make a lot of sense. But um, let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully that explains uh, heuristics. Thank you.